PowerShell Summit Europe edition. Um, and I get to go again first thing in the morning. <laughs> so um, just a quick, uh, quick intro. Uh, Steve Murawski, work at Chef, uh, build software there. I uh, used to work at Stack Exchange, did a lot of DSC stuff there. And, so, and now I'm here talking at you. Um, <laughs> so today I'm going to be talking about testing DSC resources with Test Kitchen and, Pe and Pester. And there are no slides for this presentation. This is all going to be interactive demo. And with the key part being interactive. <laughs> so I will be asking you some questions. I will be uh, soliciting your input. And we will be building this out together. So uh, congratulations, you guys get to work this morning too. Uh, <laughs> so just a quick little uh, intro to uh, kind of the, the space that we're going to be working in as we walk through. And uh, who here has worked with desired state configuration at all? Meaning you've, you've actually just, you've run start-dsc configuration at some point in your life. Okay. Um, and anyone build a resource? Couple people, okay. So one of the, one of the, one of the kind of the scary things about desired state configuration is that there's this agent that runs on our servers in the background and every half hour or 15 minutes or hour, it's going to run code on our systems that's designed to change the state of our systems and potentially do things like reboots or restart services or, and, or move files and stuff like that. And I don't know about you, but that, like, that scares the living daylights out of me. Um, unless I know what that service is or, or what that, how that code is going to behave, how that script's gonna behave um, on my systems given everything being correct. And so one of the ways that we can get that high level of assurance is testing our resources and testing how they behave on, on existing systems and, and making sure that they do what we expect them to do when they get into production. And so one of the tools that came out of the, the Chef ecosystem is a tool called Test Kitchen. And because uh, almost everything in the Chef ecosystem has some like food or cooking related theme, so you have Test Kitchen. And one of the great things about Test Kitchen is it's uh, very extensible and very pluggable. And so with a very little bit of, uh, of code, I've written a plugin called Kitchen DSC, which allows you to test DSC resources without necessarily needing to, without having to do anything chef related. You can just execute and verify that your, your DSC resources work properly. The other side of that is it's also pluggable as far as what frameworks you can use to do tests. And so there's a uh, Pester plugin for it. So we can write our tests in Pester, we can write our resources and configurations in PowerShell and desired state configuration. And so we can use Test Kitchen without having to know one lick of Ruby. And because that's the framework that's implemented in, which is handy. Um, and it's really easy to install because all you have to do is, is install Chef DK. So the Chef, uh, one, of the, one of the tools in the Chef ecosystem is the Chef Development Kit. And you can install it. Oh, I think I closed that blog post. Uh, let's see, here we go. Uh, I always forget the exact URL, so we'll just find it. But I have a blog post out on my blog there. How to install Chef DK on Windows? It's in chocolatey, so you can do install package or choco install, or you can go to the Chef site and get it. You don't have to worry, you're not gonna run any Chef if you don't want to, um, but that's the easiest way to install Test Kitchen without having to deal with installing Ruby, figuring out exactly how that's gonna work on your path and, and any related things. Chef DK just comes bundled with Test Kitchen. So the, uh, Chef DK is a Chef development kit. It's just all the tools you'd need to get started with Chef. And again, Test Kitchen is one of those. But we can use it just with DSC without necessarily having to use any, anything else other, otherwise. The only thing we'd have to do is uh, install Kitchen DSC and Kitchen Pester. 
and I'm working to get those actually included, so we'll ship those with Chef DK at some point. So, but for now, you, you have to install those separately. That's really easy. We can do Chef Gem. And I'm, a, I'm on a Mac right now. This works the exact same way on Windows. Kitchen BSC. And when you install Chef DK, it puts a command line tool called Chef on your, on your path. And whenever you start with like Chef Gem or Chef Exec, it runs things in the context of your Chef DK instance. So you, it just keeps everything kind of all self-contained. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to care about it. So we do Chef Gem install, Kitchen DSC. And it's gonna find something out. There have been a couple of little revs of it. Um, and then Kitchen Pester. Anyone, anyone use Hyper-V on the client, client Hyper-V, or you, you run server locally and you, okay. If you, have, if you run client Hyper-V or, ser, uh, or server Hyper-V as your local workstation or where you want to do your testing, uh, there's also a Hyper-V plugin for Pester, or for, I'm sorry, for Test Kitchen, um, Kitchen Hyper-V, and it, so you can use Hyper-V virtual machines. Um, it, it'll just stick a differencing disk in front of a base image and let you use that for your tests, which is much faster than uh, some of the other options, but. Uh, Can you do it uh, to a remote machine? Not yet. Not yet. Working on that. Um, that. That's the next thing I'm gonna be implementing um, after uh, prob probably in the next few weeks. Um, I've, actually, I've, I've had a few requests for that now, um, so I'm, I'm probably gonna do that in the next few weeks. Um, all right, so uh, I've got one thing I have to do first um, so that we can make secure connections out from Test Kitchen. Uh, that's one of the downsides right now of in t uh, until I have a pull request out for the core Test Kitchen code to um, support native negotiate auth on Windows. Um, anyone had to dig deep into WinRM here? Yeah, if you have, it's, it's painful. Um, Matt Rock just had a thing out on Twitter earlier today or late last night or one of the two um, about how it's a miracle that any Windows machines can actually talk to each other because of how, how convoluted WinRM can, be, can seem. And, uh, and I don't disagree. <laughs> um, so, based on all that, uh, there, there's, I have one prerequisite that we need to do. Um, and I will have a blog post coming out probably to the, towards the end of today with all the steps I'm talking about here. So don't worry too much about grabbing these steps. I'm gonna have a blog post going through everything you need to do to set up Test Kitchen in your environment. Um, and that, so that'll be out on my blog later today. Steven? Yes? Is there also a, a Chef Gem query? Yep. So, uh, <laughs> uh, Chef Gem list. And you can also t you can type a name. So if I wanted to find like everything that was kitchen prefixed, it'll look at all my local gems that I have installed. But that, it's all, all locally installed. Yes. And so if you want to look for ge for what gems are available out there in the wide world, you can search Ruby Gems, uh, RubyGems.org. Um, and on GitHub, there is a test kitchen organization, and. Let's see, and ki both Kitchen DSC and Kitchen Pester are actually in that Test Kitchen org. And you can find there's, there's, open, there's an OpenStack driver. Um, there's a preview out, actually, that supports Windows guests and OpenStack. Um, I, I actually worked with uh, one of our uh, guys in our partner engineering org about getting that working last week. Um, Busser is one of the testing frameworks. Got server spec, EC2, uh, DigitalOcean, Rackspace. Got all sorts of, uh, here's Kitchen Hyper-V, Kitchen Pester, Kitchen DSC, all sorts of fun stuff. Um, so you can f find drivers for a lot of different, um, a lot of different platforms. And this isn't everything that, someone's got a puppet, uh, a puppet, uh, a puppet provisioner out there. I'm going to go through the terminology here for uh, as we build our config file. So there's a couple of concepts that we need to get for a test kitchen. 
Um, so Test Kitchen glues together a couple different components. And the first thing that we need is something to spin up the machine under the system under test. And in test kitchen parlance, that is called the uh, that's called the driver. And so the kitchen Hyper V is a driver. There's a kitchen Vagrant. Uh, anybody use Vagrant here? All right. Um, Vagrant is a very common tool in a lot of uh, web ops or DevOps shops. Um, it's basically a uh, wrapper around a virtualization provider, and it, it works with Hyper-V, VMware Fusion, VirtualBox, uh, as well as some cloud providers, and just gives you a consistent way to uh, spin up new virtual machines based on a base image. And uh, so, the, so one of the one of the most common drivers for Test Kitchen is Vagrant. Um, there's also like Kitchen AWS. Um, at some point, uh, there will be a, uh, a an Azure driver. Stuart? SLR. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so at, at some point, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll have that, we'll have that available. But our drivers are what we actually use then to spin up the machine under test. And we define all this stuff in a kitchen YAML. And the kitchen YAML is, um, so YAML is just another format, kind of like INI files. And so we're going to create a kitchen YAML file. Can you maybe make it Let's see here. Um, you, you might in just a second. Um, okay. Let's try it. Oh, it's, yeah, it's, um, it's cutting the screen off. Let me see if I can fix the resolution here. Yeah, it's like cutting off part of the screen. Uh, displays. I'm sorry, pardon? It's probably the project or something. Yeah, we had the same. Oh, thing yeah. <laughs> So well, uh, let's see. We'll, we'll Can you use another tool for everything? But then we'll I'm sorry, pardon? Use another tool for everything, or, yeah. or just make the terminal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's 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 the easiest solution. Let's go with that. Uh, can move it over here. Oh. There we go. Uh, I'll just make that a little smaller here. Okay, so we're gonna create a kitchen a dot kitchen YAML file. This is the config file for Test Kitchen, and uh, we want we're gonna create a driver, and I'm gonna use Vagrant, and we can do we can do stuff to customize. So different drivers will have different options. I can you know. Um, Provide uh, was it CPU and uh, I got some examples here. Yeah, customize CPUs to memory. Yeah, CPU. Was it memory? So in this in this driver block, and I could do if I if I was using. Uh, at, at my desktop at home, I use Hyper-V, so I'd have Hyper-V, and I could have some options there. Each of the each of the drivers will document what options they can take, and you can find those usually on their project pages. 
But this is what's going to spin up the machine that I'm going to apply my configuration to and I'm going to test against. The, the reason that we want to do this is so that we can test on either a fresh machine or on a, an image of a system that we would be test that would be working on in production that's not our workstation. So we can test things that can be destructive in nature. And so we can test things that would you know, cause the system to reboot or turn services on or off or change, uh, change permissions on files or, or things. Things that we don't want to have happen to our local workstations. So the next step then, after we've, after we've defined where we want these things to run, now we need to define a tool to actually, pr uh, that our provisioner, the tool that's going to apply the configuration. And for our context, that's gonna be desired state configuration. So we'll do provisioner, name, DSC. And so that when we, when we Chef Gem installed Kitchen DSC before, that made the DSC provisioner available available to us for Test Kitchen. There are a bunch of options that you can set uh, for, uh, for the DSC provisioner. Basically, I've exposed a bunch of the stuff in the LCM, so you, could, you can configure if you want to allow it to reboot, you can configure if you, uh, the refresh mode, um, if, you're running on the, if you're running on one of the newer versions of the WMF framework, you can configure debug mode, um, all that kind of fun stuff. We're just going to go with the defaults for now. And then the last thing that we need to configure is the, oh, um, the second to last thing we need to configure is the verifier. The verifier is what does our testing. So as part of writing a DSC resource, one of the things that we have to do is that we, we need to write a test target resource method or a test, a test method or a test target resource function. And what that's supposed to do is tell us if we're in the desired state or not. And that's all well and good, but we also want, uh, as part of our integration testing, which is, what this is, which is what Test Kitchen allows us to do, we want some third party verification that what we expected to have happen with DSC actually did happen. And we don't want to trust DSC to tell us because that's, we want to test the effectiveness of what DSC thinks is happening. So that's where we're going to use a verifier. And for our purposes, we're going to use Pester. And so name, Pester. The last bit that we have to specify is our test cases. And those are called suites. And in the case of the DSC provisioner, the, the, uh, we're going to look for a file in an examples folder called DSC configuration uh, .ps1. And the suite name is going to be the name of the configuration that it runs from that file. And those are, those are all customizable. You can change where it looks for, you can change where it looks for the configuration script. You can change the name of the configuration script. And you can actually change things at any point in this, um, any point in this uh, space. And I'm forgetting one major thing here in, um, I'm forgetting our platforms, but we'll get there. So suites. In our suites, um, I want to test, so what we're going to be testing is the page file resource from the Stack Exchange resources. Uh, because that's something that changes system state, I want to test that in an isolated environment. And so I'm going to call my suite. I always forget the syntax here, so I always look back. Yeah, just name. going to be page file. So what this is going to do is on the machines under test, it's going to look for a particular file called DSC underscore configurations.ps1 and it's going to look for a configuration named page file in it to run. And the last thing which I which I thought I 
had but I forgot, is we have to declare our platforms. We specified our driver, what, we specified what virtualization tool we're going to use, but we didn't say necessarily what system or, or what operating systems or what images that we're supposed to use. And so nor, you, you, know, you can spin up one-off machines, test things, that's fine. What Test Kitchen allows you to do is to specify all of the various platforms you want to test against. So I could do WMF4, I could do WMF4 with update, I could specify WMF5 production preview, uh, and I could test those against all the various operating systems that I had images for. And so I can build this matrix of things I want to test. For time and our purposes, I'm just going to specify one, um, one platform and We'll, uh, I'm going to grab that. I have a pre-existing version of that. Um, so. Because I always forget exactly what it's supposed to look like. that in there. Don't need platforms in there twice. All right. So a lot of this, uh, a lot of the customization stuff is going to depend on what driver you're using. If you want an example of how the Hyper-V one looks, uh, the C Web Administration module under PowerShell.org has a branch, uh, S. Murawski adding tests, that has a kitchen YAML that's configured for testing with Hyper-V and has a couple of suites or tests. Hey, can, can this stand up a website and start it? Can it stop a website? You know, nothing too exciting, but it's a, it's a good example case. And it uses Hyper-V virtualization uh, to uh, spin up the nodes. Question? Yes. Uh, if, if we were not doing a DC resource, we're just testing a PowerShell function or something, uh, there is a provisioner for that as well? Or? There is a shell provisioner. So one of the, one of the options, in, and so instead of DSC, I could say shell, mm -hmm. and then it would give me, a, uh, one of the options would be to specify a path to a script, and it would, it would copy that script over to the remote node mm -hmm. to run it. And so, Part of the whole process here is, well, uh, and we're going to step through. Uh, we'll step through the process of what happens. The first thing that's going to happen is, is we go. Uh, kit, Test Kitchen will create the virtual machines, a uh, one, one virtual machine of each platform for each suite that we have identified. So if I have four suites identified, I get four virtual machines spun up. Um, and so this allows you to test each scenario. In a, in a, in, at each of the platforms. So if I had two platforms and two scenarios, four machines. Um, but yes, you can definitely do this with, uh, with a specific, with just a script, uh, there's, uh, with the shell provisioner. And that's, uh, that there's no additional thing you have to add to Test Kitchen for that. that and it just knows how to do that and it knows how to execute PowerShell. All right, so now we've got our driver our provisioner, the platform, our verifier, and our suite name. And that is good, so we will... Oh, uh, save that file. And go back into our shell. So we now have a kitchen YAML here. If I can find my mouse. Oh, there we go. We have our kitchen YAML, and this is this is just the existing Stack Exchange resources module off of GitHub, so you can easily replicate this. And I actually that that mo uh, that module actually ships with with one integration test kind of already set up for us, um, so we can act we can take advantage of that 
uh, in a little bit. So the first thing we need to do, after, since we have our DSC resource, we need to create the configuration that's going to run to, to do the application. We, we've already given it a name, page file. Um, by default, it's going to look in a folder called examples. I don't have an examples folder yet. So let's create one. And then let's create a DSC configuration. By default, it looks for a, f a file called DSC configuration.ps1. But again, that's, uh, that's one of the things you can override. It, I just had to pick some file name. Uh, configuration, import DSC resource. And we'll declare our resource. So anytime we use a resource uh, from a module, um, it, I didn't check in production preview, Mark, uh, do, we have, do we have to use import DSC resource with uh, PS desired state configuration resources now? You don't have to. It gives you a it, warning. Just a warning? You okay. So um, one of the things eventually you will need to do is for any module, you will have to make sure there's an explicit import for any module that you're getting resources from. Um, right now you get a warning. Uh, I assume at some point then that's just gonna turn to being required. Um, so import DSC resource, module stack exchange resources. That means Stack Exchange resources are, are going to have to, that module is going to have to be available on my system PS module path at some point. Um, and so part of what Test Kitchen's, uh, the DSC provisioner does, is it will take the module from our current location and deploy it to the systems under test and throw it in uh, C program files, Windows PowerShell modules for you. So I can, so that I can effectively execute this configuration. Um, so I have a couple of parameters I can provide. Initial size. I'm not going to worry too much about the implementation of the page file DSC resource. You can take a look at that. There's a typo. Uh, which one? Maximum size. Ah. There we go, thank you. Okay, and we've now got that written. And so, I've already started to scaffold out the integration test. Anybody use Pester before? Couple of people. Okay. So Pester has a couple of, what Pester does is it provides us a language to um, describe our tests or to write, to write our tests to uh, express how we want, uh, how we want this thing to, ha how we want this to, to happen. So at the top level, we have this describe keyword. It's actually a function. Um, I'll call it a keyword. Uh, but keywords are actually a new thing now uh, with, uh, <laughs> with uh, uh, the introduction of D uh, DSC. And who knows, maybe Pester will evolve one day to use the, key use the keyword capability. Uh, but it's actually a function. We give it a descriptor and then a script block. And inside that script block, <laughs> it's going to run some stuff. And if, you're, if you've used Pester to test existing modules and things, you might have like in module scope and worry about all that. We don't actually have to care about much of any of that. 
we need to write a little bit of PowerShell to test to make sure that our DSC configuration did what we expect it to do. So we need to check. So our configuration says it's going to set the page file uh, to having a certain size, which means it should not be automatically managed. And it should, it should have a uh, size in megabytes of, uh, or uh, size in bytes of three gig. So how could I go about testing that? If I, how would you retrieve page file size? Oh, WMI. WMI? Great. So I'm going to say, my page file, get WMI object, so win32 page file setting, that might work, right? So quick question. Yes. So is there a reason why not just use the test function in from the actual DSC resource if it's implemented? Yep, uh, that, and, and this is exactly why we're not gonna use the test function, is I want to verify that it that DSC did what I expect it to do. And part of the DSC operation is it runs that test function. And so I'm, I'm verifying that that test function works correctly. So I want to write something other than the test function. Yeah, okay. so you don't trust DSC. Right. The, the idea is, yeah, I do not want to trust DSC until I've verified it externally. So let me rephrase the question. Yep. Why not pull the innards of the test function and just reuse that because there's just so many ways you can get to um, information in Windows? Yep. Um, because I don't want to rely on that implementation. I want to have something external that's not, because I can change that module to return whatever. And if I, and, and so if I have some faulty logic path there, DSC is not going to notice, and then my tests aren't going to notice. But if I have that implementation here, I, w I will notice. I'll get a break. I'll have breakage then when, when something actually goes wrong. Yes, I'm writing a little bit more code. It's good. It's pro because there are only so many ways that you can get the page file setting. Um, you know, I could do get sim instance in one case and get WMI object in the other. I could um, uh, I could do some UI automation and fire. <laughs> fire up a, a console and try to do some scraping of the UI, which would be horrible. But, um, and th there, there's, a, there's, only a couple, there's only a couple of ways to get page file setting, but I want to make sure that what was done in, this is just one example, right? Um, and, and page files is kind of a real basic one, but there, you're gonna have other configurations and other things that are going to have multiple entry points, for example. Maybe there's a com object you can use, maybe there's a, um, I mean, there's a .NET method that you're going to come in and do something with. I'm just going to say, it, it's not always a one-to-one -one either. With DSC, it's checking to make sure that you stood up a website name this, where integration tests, you may not check that the website name of that exists. You may go through HTTP and make sure that the website is there. It, that's listening. Yeah, it's actually listening on AD at, at that. Yeah. Different things in the integration tests than you are from a DSC perspective. Yep. And, and that's actually very much like what the uh, what C Web Administration does in its tests. So it's um, so in its test for um, start website. One of the tests is actually just using invoke web uh, invoke rest method to retrieve some content from the site. So it's not actually going through any of the test paths. It's actually validating that hey, there is something listening, <coughs> and that index HTML should have certain content. So, uh, in the case of page file, yeah, there's only a handful of ways that we can go through this. In in the context of other resources, we have we can have a variety of ways that we can look at this thing to see. You know, um, may, maybe uh, so. A lot of the stuff in the uh, web administration module. You, uh, this, uh, the web administration DSC resources uses app command to get at things. And in some of the tests, I'm using some of the PowerShell module stuff to get at it, for example. So we, we, you know, looking at things from different routes when possible, but um, we want to validate that what's happening in DSC is, doing, is, ha is the right thing and our tests shouldn't be dependent on that module 
to succeed. All right, so uh, get WMI object Win32 page file. And let's. Um, and I don't remember offhand what I get back with page file settings, so I'm going to look at some of the other code. So stack so page file gets us back. Oh, there we go. So page file setting has properties of initial size and so I want to make sure that my initial size is what I expect. So I'll use the pester it, because that's uh, it is what sets up our tests. As it has an initial size of three gig. This is just some text description. And then I'm gonna do a script block that's going to make that assertion that, that I have the size I expect. And so I'll say page file. So initial size uh, from the page file setting WMI method comes back with, uh, in megabytes, uh, it's actually initial size MB, um, comes back in megabytes. So I'm gonna multiply it times one megabyte. Should, and that should be, should be our Functions, our little helper functions for making our assertions or our matches. And it's going to be, should be three gig. The other thing I want to test is that, um, is that the computer system, or that it's not set to automatically manage page file. And that's in Win32 computer system. So. And normally I wouldn't use the short name in the in the in a uh, persistent script, but And then there's a property on this that tells us if it's, oh, yeah. can't computer this morning. All right, so we want computer system, automatic managed page file. And I don't know why I remember that, but <laughs> should be false. Is it the uh, practice to put the WMI call outside the test? Um, Is there scoping or something? Yeah, so um, I could include that in this test. If I was going to have multiple tests that referred to page file, then I, then I would set that separate. Uh, there's also another level of, of, uh, of scoping that you can set um, at, using a context block. Because we're, we only have a couple of tests here, um, you know, it's not a big deal. So. I could very easily, if, if these were just going to be by themselves, I could just oh. and just keep them self-contained. And, and you do want you, you only want to specify them, you know, as high enough or high up enough as you need 
so you can do whatever kind of customization you need in your tests. But for, for, the, for the purposes of this, our verification tests tend to be very thin um, because we're, we're either going to be making a system call to check something or we're going to be make, we're going to be calling to some external service. There's usually not a, a ton of um, of really intricate stuff that we need to do. Where our test target resource, the, the functions that we call for that, might actually have a ton of logic built into them. We're just testing the results of things. We don't necessarily care about all of the other potential states things are in. We just care about one it, one very narrow aspect for each test. Yes. Could you parameterize these, these tests and, and the configuration stuff? You could. Yeah, so the YAML would, would see that information in? Yep. Yeah, you can you can um, you can pass you can pass through information like that. Um, the the main idea though being that you can with with the with suites you can actually divvy up your tests so that you can have uh, you want, you'd want to kind of set up, okay, this test is going to get this set of parameters. This test is going to get this set of parameters. So that um, for, um, for one configuration that you apply, you can run a set of tests against it with one set of data. And then the next, next suite is going to have another set of data against it. So that um, you're, you're testing kind of apples to apples. And so not like... I'm going to configure the page file to three gig on this machine, and then I'm going to reconfigure it and run another set of tests. Um, that you can do that kind of stuff, but that's more like you want to set, you want to have some pre-configuration done on the driver side of things, and so the machine comes up with that, and then you apply your configuration against it. So if I had some base image that I was working off from my environment, like hey, this is the 2008 R2 image that we're going to work off of. I'll capture an image of that, and that's going to be my base image that I, sp I choose to spin up, and then I'll apply some changes to it so I, I can see what's going on there. You know, more, more or less looking at uh, where you define your statics. Yeah. So keep them in one place will be nicer for me. Yeah, you, you, can, define, you can define them in the kitchen YAML. You can define them. Um, I like having them explicitly in the test, so if something breaks, I know why. Yeah. Um, and because then... Uh, if I change, if I, if I, if I'm doing some logic to figure out what, or, or to pull my parameters, that's just another point that things can, um, I can introduce another bug. If I've got them hard coded here, they're always going to be this. If I, if I change the scenario, I might either have to fix my test, or I have to fix my configuration. All right, so we've got a couple of tests. Let's uh, save this. And then let's hop back over. And so we've defined our kitchen YAML. Let's see what that, if I have any errors here. Oh, and it doesn't like my YAML. That's fine. YAML is a very, uh, uh, YAML is very uh, sensitive <laughs> about its format, which is why I, uh, what, it's untracked, oh. Still saying they're untracked. Ah. Clear up some of this stuff here. All right, let's 
try this again here. Get check out. I did. Uh, oh no. So okay, something's not happy here. The, oh, it had get kitchen. Uh. Git is not my friend this morning. All right, there we go. And I'm just gonna go back here quickly and resave this. Yes. All right, our tests are saved. And Let's see. So, kitchen list. Let's see if it reads the kitchen yaml here for me. All right, perfect. So, kitchen. Uh, let me clear off some of this junk here, and we'll start with a fresh screen. So, running kitchen list will show me all of the instances, and it's going to be sweet name dash platform name. That's the default way it will name instances. They'll tell me the driver, the provisioner, the verifier, what kind of transport it's using. Uh, if I was going against a uh, Linux box, it would tell me SSH, and it'll tell me the last thing that happened with it. And we haven't done anything yet, so uh, there's that. Let me see if I have uh, my DSC configuration. Okay. Um, I think I had a different example in this one, so let's make sure we're... We're testing what we expect to be testing. Uh, yep. Yeah, we want this to three gig. Okay. All right. So First step, so Test Kitchen has one, has, does have a function that will go through all the steps all on its own. We're going to walk through the individual steps here so we can see what happens. So we want to do Kitchen Create. So Kitchen Create will go through and start spinning up. It, by default, it goes serially. So if I had multiple machines, it would go create one, then the next. You, uh, you can give it a parameter, uh, dash C, and tell it to spin up them all at the same time. Uh, so depending on what kind of uh, hardware you have, that might or might not work well. Uh, in the case of Vagrant, it sometimes takes a little while because you have to copy a whole VHD or uh, VMX or whatever based on the, on the virtualization that you're doing. Uh, I like the Kitchen Hyper-V one, kind of because I wrote it, but it uses differencing disks, so it goes really, really fast. Um, my, unfortunately, my laptop that I had Hyper-V on uh, decided to not perform well before I came out here. Uh, so it didn't like something with my upgrade to the latest uh, fastering <laughs> build, so I have to rebuild my Hyper-V laptop. Something in the slow ring. Pardon? A slow ring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, so while this is spinning up, uh, yeah, it's gonna go through, log everything out. Um, while this uh, kitchen creates a folder in in the in the project repo uh, called uh, it's a dot kitchen folder, and in there there's a logs folder. Everything we see spew out to the screen is also logged to a file for a later uh, later examination. This becomes more important when you run multiple platforms because sometimes the outputs start to get intermixed if you have things running at the same time. So having, you have a, a separate log files in which you can go take a look. So it's got one node spun up. It's a, base, it's a default 2012 R2 instance. 
Um, Kitchen create just deals with the driver. It just spins up that node. The next step that it would take is kitchen converge. And what this does is it will package up the DSC resource, copy it over to the local system under test, <coughs> and I'll start this while it's doing it. It'll configure the LCM, apply the configuration. And so, yeah, it's generating the MUF for the configuration, and we'll see if I did something wrong. All right. And then we get the output from our DSC run. Wow, time went fast. Um, and that all looks good. Yes? So how, how does it get copied in? Uh, over WinRM. Okay. Yep, so basically it zips up everything. It, it, um, it zips up the module and... To, uh, take, basically takes spider ray and shoots it over and, de uh, and reconstitutes it on the remote system. Um, now let's verify, because I only have a few minutes left here. So kitchen verify, we'll actually go through and test. And oh, it didn't like something. Um, it transferred the files over, but didn't actually install Pester. Try this again. All right, something's not performing. Right? This worked perfectly this morning. Uh, <laughs> that, that's what I get for destroying the VM image. Um, I'll to, so there's a very handy feature. You can change the log level. So we can actually see what's going on. So you can see troubleshooting on the fly here. Um, Uploaded zero files. Oh, because um, it couldn't find anything. That's why. Um, let's see where it thinks it's looking for our test. <coughs> One of the most useful commands in Test Kitchen when you're troubleshooting things is Kitchen Diagnose. And what this does is it will actually take the config file and it merges it all and it figures out, okay, these are, these are the values I think I'm looking for. So my test base path, which it should be looking for, is C users, S. Murawski, GitHub, PSHR, test integration. Yep, there's stuff there. Or there should be. Let's see. That's where we saved our test. Yep, there's Stack Exchange page file. Oh, haha. Uh, I know why. It, the, because the, uh, let's rename this. Um, Um, it's looking for a folder with the name of the suite name, and I used page file instead of stack exchange page file. So we'll fix that. That's why it wasn't doing anything because it didn't find any tests. And that's my fault. But we will fix that. And hopefully before the session ends. Oh, um. Uh, oh, uh, there we go. You will notice. Oh, Ellen, uh, uh, yeah. I, I do not Mac very well. I'm, I'm definitely a uh, more of a Windows guy. But I miss my PS read line. <laughs> All right, let's try this one more time here, and hopefully this will... So do they force the Mac on you? No, um, but honestly, I, want, I wanted to be... Ah, uh, there we go, yep, now we're getting PowerShell Get, um, and then we're going to get uh, Hester, <laughs> and... Um, oh. 
So one of them, one of it verified. So what? It, uh, so this is actually a failing test because I expected three gig. I got back zero. Um, it's probably in my test because I was going off of memory of property names. But um, yeah. So paid file initial size zero. If it succeeded, we, we would have gotten exit zero, but otherwise it gives us what the error message was, which is nice and handy. Um, no, they, they don't force the Mac on me. I took it because I wanted to feel what the cross-platform management pain is, and there's a lot of it. <laughs> um, and so it also gives me an alternate platform to test on. So I, I, do, I do most of my development on Windows. And then I go over to my Mac and I try to run, this, run the same stuff there and I run the tests there to see what, what fails differently. And so it gives me my chance to verify things in a, in a cross-platform way. A lot of our customers work off of Macs as well. So um, if I'm trying to replicate a problem or an issue, um, though I, I tend to do almost all my, and more and more of our, actually more and more of my coworkers are, uh, they're, they're like buying surfaces left and right. And, I got a bunch of people who are now using Kitchen Hyper-V at work, and it's really weird, but it's interesting. It's awesome. So, cool. Yeah, I saw a hand going up back there. Uh, yes. Oh. I think uh, you know. Does it run all the tests, or just the first one that failed? It, it runs all the tests. It, so the, the test that failed was actually the first test, and it ran the second test, and the second test succeeded. Just one skip. Oh, I see. No, I see. this one right here. Yeah, it's, it's, I see. Yep, it actually ran the set. So um, as long as it as long as there's not some kind of terminating exception that blows things up, yeah. Pester should go through and run the run run all the tests. <coughs> so you'll just see the and you'll get back the error of what's failed. So, all right. Any any other questions? Because uh, I'm I'm a few minutes over time. Does it also clean up the fields after testing? Yes. So if I want to, if I it, so by default. If you run the kitchen test, it'll go through all those phases. It'll go create, converge, verify, and if everything succeeds, it'll run kitchen destroy, which will destroy the VMs. If, you, if it fails, by default, it will leave it there, and that's a configuration option. You can say, hey, no, destroy it in, in every case, because I'll have the log file. But it leaves the machine, by default, it will leave the machine there so you can go investigate why, or you can, try, or you can fix your test, or fix your configuration, and then rerun um, against the existing machine until you're, so you don't have to keep spinning up brand new machines every time. So yes, I'm over time. I'm done. I'm wrapping up. <laughs> Thank you.